that's not honest. Is that for months, I'm, I'm sorry, I think we're talking over each other. No, I'm I'm saying that's dishonest. You're just like you're saying don't trust the Republicans on their messaging. David Pakman faced tough criticism on the Megyn Kelly show as he tried to defend the current administration's shortcomings. Megyn Kelly and her guest firmly challenged Pakman's arguments, calling out what they saw as inconsistencies in his defense. Throughout the debate, Pakman maintained his usual style, calm and measured, but his approach came across as somewhat dismissive and condescending which Megyn Kelly didn't let slide. This exchange highlights the sharp back and forth between the two, as Kelly pressed Pacman on several points, refusing to let him avoid tough questions. Let's take a closer look at how this debate hey, unfolded. Hogan, this is not a personal attack in any way. You seem like a really nice guy. We don't know each other. There's almost an affirmative action with these Trump folks where if these were football coaches that had lost everything for a decade, they wouldn't, Kaylee McEnany wouldn't be on Fox News. We wouldn't be going to Hogan and saying, give us your state. They've lost everything. And somehow through some kind of affirmative action, I guess we still hear from them, but they're desperate, Megan, because this has gone gone sideways for a decade. Wait, what are, you, what are you suggesting, David, that because the Republicans have had a rough couple of electoral cycles, everyone who is on Team Trump should just go underground, that they shouldn't speak anymore, no, even though he's no going to be the Republican nominee? No, I'm, I'm glad to hear from Hogan, but there's a degree to which we would say, wait a second, how could his analysis or it's not about Hogan. How could any of these analyses really accurately reflect reality when these are the analyses that lost them everything in what, four or five elections in a row? I would approach it with caution. Go ahead, Hogan. What do you think of that? Yeah. Um, OK, let's unpack that. By that rationale, I guess we should never hear from Hillary Clinton again either, because she lost. Um, any Democrat who loses an election, you can't hear from them. Anybody who worked in a White House, worked in an administration, shouldn't have a say-so in what's going on in this country. Of course, this is a battle uh, between those who love America and those who hate America, because the positions of both parties, has they've been clearly articulated now for a long time. And so I think moving into 2024, as we kind of reset, and now we've lived under the failed policies of Joe Biden for the last four years, where Americans have been kicked in the teeth. Um, they can't afford gas and groceries. Crimes are spiking all over their communities. Wars are breaking out over, all over the world. The southern border is bringing in, you know, uh, fentanyl, killing our American citizens, human trafficking, child smuggling. It's all up. Um, I think the stark reality of the fact that we've got an upcoming election where these two men uniquely have a record, not as a governor saying, if you elect me, I promise I'll do this. I'm, I'm a senator. I did this for my state. Both of these folks were president. The records are stark. And the juxtaposition where we used to have to point back to Reagan, Megan, you just played a, an incredible speech. Remember how good it was in the 80s? We can say we had record-setting success in record-setting time three years ago. It took one guy and his demented policies to tear us down this quickly. So this election, no question, is going to be significant for the future of America. But to say someone who lost an election or wasn't part of the winning team shouldn't have a say-so is so insane. Go ahead, David. Yeah, no, of course I'm not saying they shouldn't have a say-so. What I'm saying is at this point, it seems clear the American people see through it. And the people who lost five elections in a row are not the ones I'd be listening to on policy. Now, with regard to a lot of the stuff that Hogan mentioned there, we can go but one by one or, or, or not. I mean, just to pick a couple of things, because there was a lot there, you know, on inflation. I mean, listen, uh, it, 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 groceries and gas, they were even cheaper under Obama. They were even cheaper under Bush and cheaper under Clinton. I mean, yes, there is inflation. We have not had a deflationary spiral, but inflation's at about 3% right now, which is what every serious economist says is the target. With regard to the record right now, unemployment, I mean, it's like, it's almost silly for me to do this because the American people know, but we've never why had why unemployment try immigration below 4%. Yeah. We've yeah. never had unemployment below 4% for this long in 50 years, and it remains there. Wage growth has outpaced inflation. GDP is a completely normal no, and healthy 3%. You, you know, it's like every, people know why, why don't you try, and, and try immigration, because that's in the Megan, news today, David. Yes. Take, take that one up. Well, what I, I mean, ask me a question about it. What's, what's are, the are, question? We, are we doing better under Joe Biden when it comes to illegal immigration than we were under Trump? David Pakman often comes across as calm and polite, 
but his debating style tends to rely on whataboutism and evasive tactics. Instead of answering questions directly, he seems to sidestep issues by asking for definitions or acting conveniently naive. For example, when faced with clear data, like rising costs of food, gas, and fuel, sometimes by as much as 30 to 70 percent, Pacman will focus on less significant statistics, such as a 3 percent increase, without addressing the larger issue. This is a common frustration many have with progressives or left-leaning figures like Pacman, who avoid giving straightforward answers. Megyn Kelly and her guest recognized this and called him out for tap dancing around the important topics. Rather than engaging with the core issues, Pacman tends to shift the conversation to points that suit his narrative, while ignoring more pressing concerns. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this analysis or have a different take. Don't forget to leave a like if you're enjoying the discussion. Now let's dive back in. People continue to cross over illegally as they have for, what, 100 years, 200 years? So it's years. the same. I think that same. one of the funny things that has That's happened not is that for months, I'm, I'm sorry, I think we're talking over each other. No, I'm I'm saying that's dishonest. You're just like you're saying don't trust the Republicans on their messaging, and you come on here and want to tell me that it, it's the same. Like con they're just continuing. No, there's, there's been no increase. Flows. There have been periods of a the, couple of months ago we had ten thousand a day oh, crossing the southern border. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah Sorry, and, I think we're all talking over each other. Now you know. Oh, go you ahead, David. The floor is yours. Wait, I, wait, Hogan. I'll bring go. you in, but let, let me defend that. Go ahead, David. Oh, okay. No, listen. I mean. Based on the Border Patrol statistics, there have been times during the Biden administration where crossings have on average been below where they were under Trump. At some points, they were above that. The funniest wow. part to me about immigration is that now that Republicans themselves torpedoed the bill they wanted because Trump said, no, 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 I need something to run on. I need something to do. Biden puts in place this limitation, which, by the way, doesn't solve the reason people are trying to come here. We need more immigration judges. I'm glad Biden made this point. Now that he did it, they're still not happy. And they're saying, well, it's only for political reasons. Why do you think Trump wanted to do this? It's also for political reasons. So this seems like a political game to me when the reality, Megan, is we never permanently deal with DACA. We never permanently deal with the reasons people even want to come over here in the first place. It's a lame political football. You, wow. You, OK, you go ahead. It's very early. fascinating to me for me here. I appreciate I have to say, David, I appreciate you coming on the show because we don't get a lot of progressives and I, they know I don't really agree with them on most I things. I don't know so why not. I actually really, I appreciate you being here and saying, you know, the way you see the, these things and the way the left views these things, because it's actually educational. Well, I don't know about the left, but listen, I'm on the left. Countries have a right to enforce immigration policy. If you're here illegally, of course, you're subject to deportation. I mean, I think that there's a caricaturizing that happens of the left on this issue. I'm an immigrant from Argentina. We came here legally. I'm now an American citizen. People still write to me and say, you should go back to Argentina. But listen, I, I, I don't want the left characterized as something that it isn't on this issue. You'll never hear I'm me not, say a country I doesn't think have, I have a right to enforce dead to policy. Rights. Otherwise, we'd have different policy. I mean, Hogan, you work for the yeah. Trump administration. The first thing that Joe Biden did when he took over was to reverse the three principal things that Trump was doing to stop the flow of illegal migrants across yeah. the southern border, the Remain in Mexico uh, program, the asylum seekers on Moss, and the construction of the border wall. He shut it all down. He sold off the, all the parts. You couldn't even try to rebuild the there wall was no thanks to what he did. David Pakman's arguments often feel disconnected from the reality of the situation at the southern border. For example, there are reportedly 75,000 tons of materials sitting at the border halted by the Biden administration, which had previously been intended for construction. Additionally, the number of illegal immigrants crossing the border has increased significantly, yet Pacman tends to downplay the issue by saying, we've always had illegal immigration, it's always been a problem. This dismissive approach is frustrating for those who see the current situation as a serious issue. Megyn Kelly clearly sees through Pacman's tactics, and many viewers likely do as well. The point is, illegal immigration remains a pressing concern, and to ignore its growing impact is to avoid acknowledging the real problems at hand. If the federal government is allowing more illegal immigration, it raises the question of whether they are, in a sense, contributing to an increase in criminal activity, which directly affects the citizens. I wish Megyn Kelly would have asked Pacman that question directly, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. 
What do you think about Megyn Kelly's approach to David Pakman on this issue? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and take care. See you in the next one.